2021 has turned into an interesting year for gaming. From delays upon delays, two platformers contending for Game of the Year, and Redditors making GameStop stock valuable again, it's been a wacky year to say the least. But 2021 has also brought us one of the most interesting games in a long time, New World. After more than five years of controversy, multiple delays, graphics card issues, and the fate of Amazon games possibly resting on its magical shoulders, we have finally arrived at New World's launch date. So, how did we get here? For those that may be unfamiliar, New World is the latest MMORPG to make a run at the World of Warcraft honeypot. This time around, the Don Quixote tilting at the MMO windmill is Amazon Game Studios, better known as Amazon Games. Now the game has come out, and as we said, it's an MMO, which means it's impossible to review at launch. So instead, we're going to shed some light on what the hell New World is and how we got it. And when I eventually run out of obscure historical references, we're going to open this up to a larger chat, so be sure to stick around for that. Okay, so what is going on in New World? In this title, you find yourself washed up on Eternum, a mysterious island of legend. This lost Eden contains a mineral called Azoth that can grant a user incredible abilities, but it also comes with a cost. Throughout all of history, humans have traveled to Eternum in search of its power, but as Lord Acton famously said, power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You heard that right. The new x now has 12% more 19th century British historians. Lord Acton also said, learn as much by writing as by reading, which is somewhat apt, but we'll get to that in a minute. Corruption is the key component of the island of Eternum and New World itself. Across the various areas, you'll find enchanted ruins, magical creatures, and beings, both alive and undead, all impacted by the corruption. The main villain of the game, perhaps even the controller of the corrupted, is a woman named Isabella. Not much is known about her outside of her weapon, Isabella's Chosen, a unique buff sword that you can unlock, and Isabella's Amulet, a pre-order bonus. But if anything, it's clear that this game is packed with lore waiting to be discovered. Isabella, incidentally, was also the name of the Queen of Spain that financed Christopher Columbus's trip to well, the other New World. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. And just from the map on the New World website alone, you get a sense of all the work and care that went into crafting this island of Eternum. But this brave New World was not without criticism. Since its announcement, New World has received a cornucopia of shade, namely due to its gameplay and topic. A group of settlers traveling to a new world to conquer it from the beings that inhabit it already. Yeah, if you can imagine, New World's colonialism theme has ruffled a lot of feathers, even inside their own development team. According to Jason Schreier, it got to the point where they had to bring in a tribal consultant to point out to execs that, yes, you are being insensitive. A corporation familiar with exploitation hires an outside firm to point out said exploitation. Who'd have thunk it? But alongside its sprawling map and lore, New World features several player versus environment options, including invasions and expeditions and player versus player challenges. If you really want to, as they say, pwn some noobs, players can join one of the game's three factions or take it to the limited outpost rush a PvPvE mode that is a 20 on 20 battle resulting in a cacophony of capturing, gathering, and classic MMORPG chaos. Okay, now that we know what New World is, let's dive into the watery depths of the how. 2014, just a year after G4 TV never stopped playing but stopped showing the playing on television, Twitch was purchased by Amazon for $970 million in cold hard cash that is Scrooge McDuck's swimming money. In fact, the purchase of Twitch is almost 65 times the size that the U.S. government paid for the Louisiana Purchase. Reminder to the viewers out there that went to public school. The Louisiana Purchase is when France sold colonization rights to the United States for land it didn't even own. So now that Papa Bezos has Twitch nestled under his roof, it's time to get down to business and make some games for people to stream while distractedly talking to chat for hours on end. Fast forward to TwitchCon 2016. Amazon Game Studios reveals their first three major PC games in development. Breakaway, a team-based multiplayer brawler. Crucible, a free-to-play multiplayer shooter. And, you guessed it, New World. 
Mike Frazzini, Amazon Game Studios Vice President, had never developed, produced, or even worked on a game himself, but was determined to deliver a billion dollar franchise with each game. What, like it's hard? What, like it's hard? This is when the seas get rough for Bezos' gaming galleon. In 2018, one year away from its scheduled release, Breakaway, Amazon's Rocket League meets League of Legends love child, is canceled. This comes after the studio blames it on a development hiatus, leaving Breakaway to slowly collapse like a flan in a cupboard. So now Amazon Game Studios is down to two AAA billion dollar franchises, right? Wrong. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Just two years later, Relentless Studios, a subsidiary of Amazon Game Studios, announces the cancellation of Crucible after its release in May of 2020. Crucible was Amazon's Overwatch, a free-to-play multiplayer shooter that received an assortment of mixed and poor reviews, much like every piece of assembly required furniture on Amazon's marketplace. The picture looks nice, but those pre-drilled holes will not line up. Crucible was delisted from Steam in July, returned to open beta, and was discontinued entirely that November. Look, everyone cancels games. Developments happen, directions change, investments are dropped, Isabella requests a papal bull in order to start the Inquisition. You just gotta take it all in stride. But when you are an emerging game studio under Amazon that promises three AAA titles and you can't deliver even one within five years, that's not a good look. And I get it, everybody wants to get into the gaming industry. Netflix is jumping in. Tesla is letting you play games in your car. Amazon themselves is knee deep in the gaming trenches with Twitch. Amazon Game Studios, the Lumberyard Engine, and now the Amazon Luna cloud gaming platform. But just because you're a company that's successful at delivering 14 packages a day to my apartment doesn't mean that you're gonna succeed at everything you touch. Like McDonald's introducing salads, or Tom Hooper thinking that a film adaptation of Cats is gonna win him another Oscar. <laughs> Hashtag release the butthole cut. Okay, it's 2021, all hands on deck for New World. And I mean all hands. The developers on Crucible are immediately moved over to the Amazon MMORPG after the game's discontinuation. In February, Amazon Game Studios announced the third but not last delay of the game. Then in July, back when we were telling you about the mini mishaps in the Halo Infinite development, well, New World decided to go for the gold. And by gold, I mean gold bricks, because the game started to brick up GPUs during its closed beta. That's right, after day one of their closed beta, it was reported that several NVIDIA RTX 3090 graphics cards had bricked while running the game. The supposed culprit? The lack of a frames per second limit on the menu screens. Loading menu screens suddenly caused these micro machines to render more than 9,000 frames per second and simply overloaded them. Which is actually kind of happy. Amazon Game Studios quickly came forward with a statement. We have seen no indication of widespread issues with 3090s, either in the beta or during our many months of alpha testing. The new world closed beta is safe to play. This is like me getting on a ride at Six Flags Magic Mountain and the ride operator turns to me and says, don't worry, only a few people were flung from this roller coaster to their deaths, but when I rode it, it was fine. But Amazon Game Studios did implement a patch to cap frames per second and received so much other feedback from the beta that they eventually pushed the game for a final time from August to September 28th, which is today. So after all that, here we are. New World has lifted their anchors and set sail for public release. And how does the public feel about that? As of right now, okay. Marketing for this game has been here and there. Amazon certainly isn't shouting it from the rooftops like Bethesda did with their Fallout 76 mural. As of the day we recorded this video, New World isn't even the first image of the carousel of the Amazon Games website. It's Lost Ark, Smilegate RPG's popular Korean MMORPG that Amazon is publishing to North America and Europe. That's like me not being on the G4 TV website. Wait, I'm not? And let's take a moment to chat about Lost Ark. This publishing arrangement was announced earlier this year during E3 2021 to much surprise and excitement. Lost Ark is a hugely popular game and has even won six awards in various categories at the 2019 Korea Game Awards. It makes sense that a company as huge and wealthy as Amazon wants to have their drone hands in a lot of gaming pies. But having two magical MMORPGs competing in the same market is kind of like having the G4 TV host duke it out in some comedy cage match battle royale. Am 
my money's always on Gerard. Honestly, it's fascinating just watching a giant like Amazon develop their own game studio right in front of our eyes. 20 years ago, everyone looked at Microsoft as if they were crazy for developing their own console, and now look at them. They are practically the Triforce of Courage in the gaming industry Triforce. But can a massive multinational conglomerate produce highly rated and beloved AAA games? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Since it's open beta, the New World reception has been mixed. While many have praised the crafting elements in Frontier Survival World, there are still lingering concerns regarding the combat and PvE sustainability, two elements that are crucial for an MMORPG. However, thanks to its lack of a subscription and the Lumberyard Engine's Twitch chat play integration, new and old players alike may feel more inclined to revisit New World for some time. But this alone may not help New World emerge as the mind-blowing 10 out of 10 five-star Yelp review AAA billion dollar franchise that Amazon is hoping for. Maybe New World will take off and join the ranks of great MMORPGs like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV. Maybe it will be an online game that continues to improve like Black Desert Online or Fallout 76. Or perhaps it will simply fade away into existence, lost to time like the island of the tournament itself. Or like the actual story of the Pilgrims. Spoiler! English religious refugees did not invent the power of friendship with cans of cranberry sauce. In the end, I always find myself fascinated by moments like these during my many, 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 many years covering the game industry. Witnessing releases that have the power to affect how a studio is perceived and ultimately what becomes of them in the coming years. It's truly history in the making. and Hopefully this will be a sunrise and not a sunset for Amazon games. All right, uh, old Uncle Adam, when it comes to games, he's something of a rolling stone. Uh, I cannot build a lifelong relationship with a game that requires that, like a MMO. So as a result, I brought in two people that have more experience and one who has actually played the new world, uh, Corey Smallwood and Obli May. Thank you so much for like saving me and allowing for this discussion to happen. I'm super excited. Somebody's got to do it. Um, so, Ali, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, what in your mind makes a good MMO? See, Adam, I've been playing MMOs since I was, I think, like eight or nine years old, and I got my first little computer. It started with Star Wars Galaxy. That, 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 that was like five years ago, right? Essentially, yeah. I was still yeah. using my little <laughs> Crayola markers and all that fun stuff to draw fan art of Jar Jar Binks and, uh, you know, my Mabinogi characters. But yeah, I mean, I started with Star Wars Galaxy. It's one of the best MMOs out there. Uh, I started, and then I went into Nexon's Mabinogi, which was like an anime MMO. And then as the years went by, I tried out Maple Story, I tried out World of Warcraft, and now I've kind of settled in on Final Fantasy XIV. So for me, what makes a really good MMO is having kick-ass character customization, a really good class system, and a nice way to not only play with your friends in terms of like big raids and WoW, but also having really strong solo play with the questing system. And that's why I'm hooked on Final Fantasy right now. All right, uh, 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 Black Okage, what do, you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? For sure, for me, I'm actually kind of in the middle. I don't have as much experience as I believe, but I think I got a little bit more than uh, <laughs> Adam. And uh, yes, for me, yes, you do. I think it's the little details that keep me hooked on an MMO, meaning like the quality of life as well as like the, the actual quest. I'm really tired of hunting 10 wolves or knocking down five trees. Um, as well as like the small things that help build the community. That's what keeps me hooked because in the end game, the end game too. Um, what are you doing in those raids? Or, or are there none at all? Like Black Desert, that's kind of why I dropped that game because it felt like there was nothing to do towards the end. So I think the small details, um, as well as manual control. I do not like MMOs like WoW, where you kind of just have to sit there and like let it do its thing. I like to actually be in control of what I'm doing because it helps me feel more immersed and engaged in the experience. I mean, as, as, as someone who grew up on action games, I, I, I hear you all the way. Also, as, as far as the pointless kill 10 wolves, if you want to do that, go play Zelda. Uh, <laughs> so, so, Corey, you actually have had time with New World. I, I would love to hear your thoughts on the game, kind of what's standing out to you about it. So the first thing that caught my attention was actually the combat for a multitude of reasons. And the reason being is, A, like I said earlier, I like games where I'm, I feel like I'm more in manual control of things. But then also the actual weapon progression system. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't have as much experience as Ovaly, but I haven't seen that in another MMO where you whatever weapon you use, they don't have a class based system. Whatever weapon you use is uh, how your character is built. So if you pick up a an ice mage weapon, 
uh, you continue to use that, it'll level up and then you'll unlock new abilities as well as sword, shield and stuff like that. So what was really dope about that to me was it gave me a chance to actually experiment and build my own class versus at the beginning of the game, it's like, all right, do you want to be an elf that shoots arrows? I can I can test the bow and arrow out, but I can also test the gun out. And then depending on, you know, in those early levels, depending on what I like in the beginning, I can continue to build upon that. So I thought that was really dope. That was one of my favorite things about the game. Uh, I, that, that's actually very interesting sounding. A, because it kind of builds from something like Skyrim. The more you use it, the more it improves, as well as you don't have to commit at the outset not knowing what it means. Uh, Amelie, I, I, I have a feeling that's not the case for just about every MMO you played. <laughs> uh, does, does that sound appealing to you, or does that sound like it's diverged too far from the MMO archetype? Let me ask clarification really quick. So what you're saying is if you equipped, like you said, like an ice staff or for a, a mage, like you're only leveling that I staff up and the other correct and you get you get you can hold two primary weapons so like I was using a sword and shield and then I had a fire mage staff and I was leveling up those skill trees but if at any time I wanted I also tried using a musket um, and the bow and arrow and they all have different abilities oh that's really cool yeah so I'm trying out Final Fantasy 14 right now and what they have is this really interesting class system because usually when you look at a MMO like wow, you're just kind of like locked in. I can only be a paladin right now. I can only be a holy priest right now. I can only be, you know, like warlock right now. Um, but with FF14, like similar to what you're saying, you can equip the daggers and then you're immediately a rogue. And then you only level within that rogue class. So you can be a level 60 rogue and a level five gladiator. But every single time you swap out the weapon, you take on this new class which I really like because it gives you the flexibility to try every single class that you want. So maybe one day you're feeling, ah, oh, you know what? I just want to play a tank today. You swap over to your big broadsword and you're playing gladiator. And then sometimes your friend really needs an extra healer. So you could just swap out the healing staff and then you're playing the healer for the party, which again, I feel is great for solo play as well as playing with groups, especially if you have newer friends starting it. But that's really interesting for the class system because it, Reminds me a little bit of FF14, but also kind of like the early MMO days where you're just leveling everything all at once and trying to figure out what sticks and then you're forced to spend money on NX cash cards in order to reassign all your skill points because you realize you made a terrible mistake. I, 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 it, it also sounds to me as if the game is trying to appeal to people that may have n n not played an MMO for a long time but it's it's presenting something familiar from their experience playing more single player, you know, RPGs. Uh, Corey, I, I I have to imagine there's aspects of the game that could use some polish, could use some more thinking. Is there anything that's kind of you're, you're finding resistance with? I mean, we've all seen the news. I mean, they got to clean up the fact that this game turns your PC into a weapon of mass destruction. Um, <laughs> it's been out here blowing people's <laughs> GPUs up. And as much as I like this game, it's hard to recommend because, like, PCs are an investment, you know, $1,000, $2,000. That's yeah. no joke for, especially in this economy right now with COVID. Um, I think it's important that they really clean up those optimization issues, but also small um, quality. And I don't know, I could be wrong because I'm pretty sure the comments going to uh, correct me, but the hours that I spent with it, uh, there could be some quality of life changes such as like i couldn't find an option to break down multiple items i might have not spent enough time with it but uh it, it was kind of annoying to me to have to sit there and click one thing at a time and have to break it down versus being able to bulk it so for me it's just like small quality of life changes the optimization and then also there were no mounts in the beta i don't know what? if it's going to be in the full game they were kind of in from what i've seen on social media they haven't really answered that question fully on whether or not it'll be in the game and the game is huge i'm not gonna lie that's gonna get on my nerves if there are if there isn't a way to actually uh hop on like i don't know an alligator a florida alligator and ride around because they got them in the game big mutant alligators uh they do have fast travel but it costs money uh and oh. you're a broke boy at the beginning of the game so yeah Adam, Adam, I, I want to say that I want to take my previous answer back. Uh, and okay. A good MMO needs really good mounts and pets because I have turned into a whale since I've discovered disposable income and have dumped hundreds and, of dollars. And, 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 and this is a whale as in you spend a lot of money in game, not that you are a large aquatic mammal that is being hunted by the Japanese and the Norwegians. Why not both, Adam? Let me be you know what, what I want yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so let's get on to uh, what I think is sort of the, the larger question. Uh, this is the third game from Amazon Game Studios, but the first game to actually get released. 
Um, do you think that this might actually sort of make a case for Amazon Game Studios going forward with new IPs or just new publishing deals of, of significant titles? Amazon is all about a dollar. Um, that's one thing I do. Really? Know, and yeah, third time's <laughs> got to be a charm. I would imagine it's only so many times they can strike out before they look at it and it's like, eh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like though, I do feel like this game has potential to succeed. And one of the things I actually didn't talk about earlier about why I really like this game, it sounds really goofy, but it's the sense of community. I think they could really lean into that and this could be the first time that they actually get one. And what I mean is, and once again, I could be wrong, but this is the first MMO that I played where it had proximity chat in it. I haven't played a game like that before. And it was really dope to be able to just be walking around. And there were so many times where like, I didn't know how to do something like break an item down. And like I was in the middle of the forest and there were some people running by and I just hit the proximity chat button. I think it's like V on the keyboard. And I was like, yo, how do I do this? And it was like, press this button while he was running away, like in a goofy manner. And I was like, yo, thank you. Like, I haven't seen that in the game before. <laughs> but then also like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a troll. Uh, it creates some very hilarious moments. It's great content. Um, so like if they continue to lean into that community feature with the proximity chat, like there was times where I died, I was laying in the middle of the street and I was just screaming, help, help. Somebody came by and picked me up. I love that. Um, so I think they do have potential, um, but in the long run, if it does fail, oh. I, I just love the idea that like Amazon's big debt is like, hey, Amazon, it means good community. <laughs> <laughs> that is ironic. <laughs> hey, um, Amelie, uh, I, 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 I saw you shrug. I mean, I think that's the thing is that like, what would you need to see from something under the heading of Amazon Game Studios to make you kind of go like, OK, that's a brand I'm going to watch. I mean, to be honest, this is the first game that I've really heard of coming out from Amazon. And I remember yeah, hearing that's, that's about miserable. it like years ago. I think it got delayed a little bit. So that was my first impression of it. I honestly just need to see them come out with this game and then maybe come out with a couple others that catch my attention in order to draw any interest from me. Or hear me out, Jeffrey Bezos skins in the, in the MMO. Yeah, that's gonna bring him in. Like, I, it, it's gonna bring him in like people into space. A I'm ball down to do with a vest and a sword and shield that works. Let me pre-order. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the biggest issue, from what I've understood, is because this is not important to the bottom line of Amazon, that like the dev teams get a lot of sort of breath. Like no one's really looking over their shoulder because it's not that important. But the flip side of that is, uh, while we may have heard about it, we're professionals. Um, it's going to be a question of anyone else is going to hear about it. It doesn't get that kind of support, that marketing, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff from Amazon because you know. It's it's not a book or it's not AWS. This is this this is not important to their bottom line. So, Corey, to, to add on to that, I'll say because I did play another one of their games. Um, New World does feel like a labor of love. Whether or not you like the game or not, it feels like the developers do care about this game. Versus um, the MOBA that they released last time I played it, I don't remember the name of it because it was so bad. But like. I played like three games and I won one. And at the end of the game, it was the first game I ever played where there was no like congratulations screen. You won and then you just went back to the menu. And I was like, I was like, what is this? Like, <laughs> I was like, Amazon's you got so much are money. You winner. Yes. <laughs> right. and, and, no, and, you didn't and get that. that. Yeah. You just went back to the menu. You didn't even get that. <laughs> well, I, I, like, okay, I, I always mutter it to myself when I get my pants on the first time. Uh, so with that horrible <laughs> revelation, uh, thank you, Corey. Thank you, Avali, for this chat. Uh, I hope it was illuminating, and I hope for all of you out there that you actually learned something, too. So what are your thoughts on New World? Are you going to play or pass on this newest MMORPG? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. While you're there, check out our Fallout 76 is Good Now video, as well as my review of September's hottest release, Deathloop. Now, one more historical fact. Abraham Lincoln was an accomplished wrestler. The Great Emancipator indeed.